Diddy uh, invited me over for dinner a couple months ago. Oh shit, yeah, I saw that. He he told me, he gave me a piece of advice. He said, I've been documenting everything in my life since 1992 or whatever it was. Mm. He's like, I have, I have footage of everything. You already know like, what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. Bah! It's your boy Lay back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another reaction. Hey, all I gotta say is if you went to this stuff, I got a full playlist. It'll be at the end of the video. You can check it out if you want to. We got a lot of Diddy stuff going on. Diddy is taking a lot of heat right now for what's going on. So we gathered up some some Diddy conspiracy theory, hidden truths. You know what I'm saying? But do your own research. Please do your own research. But if you make it to the end of this one, you a real one for real. So drop that in the comments, man. But hey, let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But this dude with all the trigger words, rock bottom. Make no excuses. My no excuses. behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. Wow. Disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. Y'all let me know in the comments. I ain't going to be stopping this video a lot. You know how I do. You know how I roll. Y'all let me know if y'all think this apology was sincere or not. Let me know. I went and I sought out professional help. Therapy. I had to go into therapy. I had to go into rehab. They don't even look like you tell the truth. Had to ask God for his mercy and grace. This is crazy. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Get out of here with that, man. What? You on my, what? What you got to say now? What you got to say now? You ain't got shit to say when you put your girl on the snap. Baby, yo, babe. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. It's hot outside. You fucking wrapped up in that blanket. Let's go jog on the beach. And is there anything that you may want to confess tonight before you go in? I keep looking like everything right here. There you go. Or right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You angelic all the time. I was at a party at Diddy Crib in, in LA. This was uh this was this was the beginning of, of 2020. You know what I mean? Uh Diddy had he had put everybody else out the crib, like the, the influx of people he had put them out. But he had he had uh he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time, man, and was really, you know what I mean, like putting his arm around me. Right. <laughs> so he had put majority of the people out, but he allowed me to stay in there. Mm -hmm. Me and you know maybe about maybe about fifteen others, you know, right. Jay Z and Beyonce being, you know, two of the other 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 fifteen people in the room. So that that just okay. put it into perspective of the type of company I was in, right, at the moment, you know. And then what? And then what? My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava. Cole. What's your other last name? Ava Barone. Ava Barone Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. I want, you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. We, but you still have beautiful parents that, but you're my child also. Please, please tell the story. You're my child so, also. <laughs> I was on the streets. <laughs> And then Papa Combs decided <laughs> that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me 
and decided to pick me up. What? And said to come inside and play with his kids. Six months old. Six months. <laughs> and Six then months. basically our uh, sister, all <laughs> four Six of us. So. Six and months. Then I always come over. Yes. And, and it's Ava Brioni Combs. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Have you met Diddy? Yeah. Uh oh. What was that look? So. What happened? Great party party. Explain. He's a cool friend of mine. <laughs> He's one of my cool best man. friends. I love him. There's nothing else to say about Diddy. Everybody <laughs> knows I love Diddy, man. Oh, you ain't gonna say it. Diddy's like, you better not talk about my. No, it's not even that. You better not. It's not Have even you been that. Friend? It ain't even got nothing to do with that. Everybody know I got respect for Diddy. I love Diddy. Everybody try to come at Diddy. Why am I make it harder for my mans? Yo, I love my man. But when I interviewed Aubrey O'Day, she told me that basically like Diddy's team was offering her money not to do it, the interview. Did, uh, wow. No. Have you had those conversations? No. Like, hey, don't mention me on No Jumper and I'll give you... No. No? Hell no. Give you some pussy. You know I tell you. <laughs> you know I will tell you. I don't know that. Right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I Count out loud. 30. Okay, huh? Four, six, seven, eight, nine, 40, 41. Yo, what the fuck did Puff just say? Nobody's gonna count this for me. Nobody said we used to wrestle over Frosty Flakes. And we're streaming loud. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking stupid. Hell no. <laughs> right, uh, cause P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta Ooh, tell him. Party, you know, no. Puff like the party. Oh. <laughs> 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 Right, because yeah. uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body, and you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell You got to tell him no. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Body, my, my baby bro, we here. Time. Tomorrow is time. time. It's time, what you time. gonna do to that thing, man? Yeah, they better tune in. They better tune in. Let's go. Let's you've been to some crazy parties, I'm sure. What, what's the what's the strangest interaction you've had at a party that was like, what, what's happening right now? I remember I was lit and I just started dancing with Paris Hilton. I was like, this is kind of, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> that, that is kind of nuts. <laughs> what yeah. song was playing? I don't even know. It was one of those nights. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, all right. You've been to some. You're out in Hollywood. A lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. They want to monetize and traumatize. I'm backing down from what I said. It, and God loved me. You understand? They, they hit me. Gap, Adidas, all that away. Still, Forbes, who hate me, right? Had to write net worth 400 million. Jesus is king. God love me. That's Kanye for you. You ever been to one of Diddy parties? Yeah, I've I've, I've been in attendance. I've attendance. been to not. Hey, what what the fuck you smirking for? How you saying that? And no. I've been in attendance. He just asked a regular question. That's all questions. I said. That's all I said. I said I've been in attendance. I have been in attendance. We never been. We just asked him. We just yeah, asked yeah. him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Did I have fun? Yeah.
I mean, it was a party. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have one of them parties. We say that about the party. What party? What party? What party? What party? We say that. I've been in attendance at, at a puff party. You know what I'm saying? I've been in attendance. Yeah, yeah, I went. Yeah, okay. but I ain't. Yeah, nah. What? I don't know which party. The party I went to. It was girls just turn up, you know what I'm saying? The regular, you know what I mean? The regular. Other celebrities and shit, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Anybody come visit you? Like what? Like what? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> y'all set me up at? What, what type no. of visitor, brother? What are we talking about? Like, what y'all? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> nah, I ain't never had nothing like that. Everybody no. came to the door. I knew who. <laughs> Not one of them parties, y'all smiling too hard. I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want to do whenever, however the fuck I want to do it. You know why? Because I'm the freest nigga in the world. In the discussion. Well. Diddy's going through a lot right now. You posted that video of him with the hair. If Diddy would have just told the people the truth from the beginning, he would have had to pay Cassie. He would have had the community behind him. Diddy's bisexual. How do we know he's bisexual? <laughs> okay, check this out, Jason. I mean, I don't know. You. My show no, no, used to no, no, be on no, no, no. Never do touch it. me. I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> you telling me Diddy ain't bisexual? I've never slept with him. That ain't what I asked you. Are you telling me right now <laughs> they will take everything you've made and reduce you to zero or give you a trillion dollars? It's one or the other. It's going to happen. And they say, Jason, is Diddy bisexual? Do you think Meek Mill? Do you Meek think Mill got hit. From Diddy? Hit, don't run. Or well, maybe it was just a Ciroc on a sunny day. Oh, Aunt, Chris Brown's manager. Who's now dating Monica. They're in the backyard. Aunt, two other people. Diddy rolls up. Yo, Playboy, you need to come out that shirt, show him what you're working with. No, he did not say that. You know what Aunt said? What? And I beat your mother Who you think you playing with? Mm. You got me up. And said that to the Puff? Damn show sure did. Wait, did that come out somewhere? How did you find out? So Ant threatened to beat up Diddy? <laughs> Listen, did what he supposed to did as a heterosexual man. If you don't know what to do when you've been violated by another man, then you might like that Did what he supposed to did. I'm thinking I'm gonna wear this hand in Toronto. Hey, yo, let me ask you a question. Look how upset he was just talking about this. Me and, and I don't believe in judgment either, but I don't want any girl out there thinking it's okay to go back to a guy who hit her. Yeah, I don't want yeah. any girl to think that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think. That's what we say. Nah, but you all you all put me in it, so, so I'm gonna speak on it. Okay. I don't think it's I don't think that it's um, right for anybody to hit anybody mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't think it's right, you know. I think that we all have to be honest with ourselves as adults, and and people have been in relationships, you know. We know sometimes those relationships get ugly, you know, and sometimes it doesn't come out into the forefront the way this one has come out. And it's a lot of stones being thrown, and we don't know exactly what's going on these are two young individuals we need to pray for them and we need to give certain support but you don't need to start just saying that you know something that you don't know you wasn't in that car i, was I wasn't in that car and it isn't right for him to put his hands on her or her to put his hands on him and we don't know what the problem is but we need to pray for them and we need to do things to support them and that's all i want to say about it i agree with Thank you. you i want to support them here's how i'm going to help you now look at how you're looking can we take a break and do it afterwards? Can we dance? Yes. I would like to dance. Dance. Do it. Dance. <laughs> this entertainment show. I know how serious it got. Like, it was legit crazy scary. I was waking up in the morning and the first thing I was doing is popping pills. No, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't, I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my... There once was a time when a baby-faced Justin Bieber has been hanging out with Diddy for 48 hours. And while the music mogul claimed they couldn't disclose what they would be doing, it feels like we already know the truth. The rumors has it that, that the feds discovered something utterly disgusting while checking the evidence they have captured in Diddy's mansion. Mm. And in one particular footage, he was doing some quite illegal with Justin. It seems like the music mogul didn't have enough time to destroy all the explosive footage, and wow. he's now knee deep in legal drama, similar to R. Kelly. 
The whispers about him using fresh talent for his own sick pleasure, pretending he was like a wise mentor or something, crumbled as the feds have watched hours of videotapes and wow. found something that explained Justin's broken soul. This is not going to be good. I'm not going to be able to make it through that. And it's just, you know, it won't work. This horrible, intimate connection between Diddy and his protege is nothing new. Yet, before the feds uncovered the videos, these were nothing but stories. In the past, there were whispers about the sick times when a teenage usher used to live under Diddy's roof for almost a year. And later, several strange footage of young Justin Bieber being offered a car for his 16th birthday by a four-year-old music mogul resurfaced. As soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time you come in LA. Yeah, this will be yours. The whole story of Diddy being into intimate activities with much young male artists is about to blow into a criminal saga. And get this, mm. Justin himself tried to hint about being the victim of this whole music business. In his 2020 documentary, Justin Bieber, Next Chapter, the baby hitmaker opened up about the struggles of his early career, namely his mentorship by Puffy, like, man, is this pain ever going to go away? It was so consistent. The pain was so consistent. I was just suffering, right? So I'm just like, man, I would rather not feel this than feel this. The singer's mental health problems are nothing new for his fans. And apparently, the whispers about him being deeply mistreated and taken advantage of by some of the industry bigwigs are truthful. There's a footage with Diddy is seen standing alongside 15-year-old Justin as he tells viewers how he can't really disclose what they will be doing as they spend 48 hours together. Diddy, who was 40 at the time, then claimed how he'd been given custody of Justin, just like with Usher. Mm. Me, so, um, and yeah, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. But if you think that Justin was having a blast with Diddy, having the time of his life and picking up some music tips, in fact, it seems like a creepy experience for a young man, especially when it was discovered that Diddy gave Justin an expensive car at the end of their weekend together. In July 2010, when Bieber was gifted a Lamborghini by Diddy for his 16th birthday, just three months after passing his driving test, no one asked a single question, yet this generous gesture is raising a lot of eyebrows amidst the legal drama and the secret life that Sean Combs have been living all these decades. With some of the victims of his mistreatment coming forward, it's clear that there are many who haven't spoken yet, and judging mm. by the signs, the baby singer is among one of them. You feel like people have taken advantage of you in the past? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, people take advantage, of course. Diddy's rise to fame has come with tons of heavy accusations, like mistreating his artists, trafficking, and even being implicated in the demises of other rappers. But guess mm. what? With the new evidence of him being allegedly intimate with Justin and Usher, it's like a new storm of allegations and things might change soon for worse. As Justin himself revealed, the industry was a vile place for a young boy. It's like this ongoing cycle of like hurt people. I was just this young kid. And oh, the drama doesn't stop there. Jaguar Wright has been reportedly working closely with the cops and dropped major bombs, claiming Diddy's mentor, Clive Davis, might have shown Diddy how to pull some really sketchy moves with young singers and rappers. Wow. And it's like their little secret. All Puffy did was do what he was taught to do. Or a tool of manipulation against someone it becomes a crime. Back in the day, Diddy probably thought none of it would even dare to expose his shenanigans. Yes, there were some stories surfacing from time to time, like there was this one girl, Dina, who came forward way before Cassie did, going public about how Diddy was super mean to her, even made her terminate pregnancies. But mm. here's the thing, Gina, Cassie, and other victims of Diddy's behavior were all adults. Like his creepy advances at Justin left many spectators uneasy. However, it's been long exposed that Diddy was helping his artists with career advances in exchange of certain favors. And now it's said he had a taste not only for female artists, but guys like Justin Bieber and others. This stuff is craziness, man. I doubt Will is laughing about it now. It's been reported that lots of Diddy tapes were recovered by the feds, and there's no doubt Will Smith is in one of them. <laughs> it's kind of, I'm like, damn, shit's crazy, man. So what I did was, I would show up to the party in my little uh in a little town car. This town, you know, I grabbed my town car, it's like a skirt. Puff the SUVs and the road the Bentleys, the whole night. He get out. I get out too with a camera. The big cannon, like, yo, Puff, I should document this shit, right? Yo, what's up, like boy? <laughs> what, what, what you talking about? I said, oh, no, I should get this, man. You files for the whole night. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. Excuse me. So I get the, <laughs> at that time, it wasn't like the little camera dog. And it was the big intrusive cannon. I had a battery pack. Hold on, man. Let me change the pack. Put my light on here. Do that again, Puff. Do that again. I missed that one. Do that again. Put the pack. So I started following him. Wow. So I followed him the whole time. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I'm filming this. And it's a pool party that is ridiculous, man. And I look up and I see Dr. Ruth. I don't know if you know who that is. The sex, the sex, the sex lady. The sex lady. I see Dr. I said, Miss Ruth, could you please come over here? This guy by the name of Sean Peter D. Combs. I need you to come meet him. I need this for my camera. Dr. Ruth and Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel pool dance. 
doing their thing, right? And you know what they're dancing to? Over in the corner, God bless, is Heavy D, Andre Harrell, and they listen to a demo. You know what the demo is? Right. Bum, 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 bum. Beyonce. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. And then yeah. Andre Harrell, run that back. Run that back. That's the one right there. That's going to be the one. You just Great. missed that. The ordering of the champagne, the whole nine. Country, country, get this. If you call me country, I'm going to say country, get this. So I'm filming it. That's the one. That's, that's the record good. right there. Run it back. Bum, bum. So Dr. Wu was puffed dancing, right? All of a sudden I get this and then I I flip the camera this way. There's the meme war and some young dude. Huh? Yeah. I don't know who do this. So I said, I said, Puff, who that? Oh, that's the young cat. I asked him question. I said, cool. So I asked uh uh the meme more. I said, is it cool if I she said sure whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, it was it was probably a wild night to be sure. So I'm I watched when they first you know got together. So what happened was I'm following Puff, following Puff, and his parties were like amazing. We in Philly one day. I, I fly to Philly, town car, same business, go up. But Puff say, this party, Playboy, this party right here, I see a million and a half dollars. I said, nigga, what? You spent a million and a half dollars on this party? I said, you come to my house, I'll throw you a party for $400, and it will rival this, not in scale. But the people there, because that's how I started. I started, I was the first social media dude. When I would do stand up, I had cue cards. This is 91. I had cue cards. And I would have people sign and put their pager numbers on it. And I would call during the week. Yo, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. So I had 800 signatures, 600 women, 200 guys. So it became a float part. So when Puff came to LA, he said, Yo, Playboy, Saturday morning, make that shit happen. I said, I'm on it. Went into my phones called 200 because I didn't have a big house 200 of my best friends girls that were beautiful but not tight but not slutty you know just mm -hmm. in the daytime it was daytime mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, kids, this is my daytime crew right <laughs> he get there he goes that's the girl on this movie and that's the girl on that I said yeah we all hang out we ain't got the money but we all hang out mm -hmm. together I said look on the table Kentucky Fried Chicken but I put on some nice plates and some cola and a picture of cola <laughs> and, 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 and it was great he had a great time mm -hmm. and that was that same party that uh that uh Pharrell was at but what I started doing in order to get artists together, I said, Puff, you don't understand. I believe America is the land of second chances. I'm usually of the mindset that everybody deserves second chances. Mm -hmm. Not rapists, not murderers, not pedophiles, Fact. but for the most part, I'm good with second chances. The problem is that doesn't apply here with Sean P. Diddy Combs. Because you what? see, the second chance is if you had come out immediately acknowledging that you were wrong once the accusations were first levied against you. Instead of excoriating those who were throwing the allegations out against you like Cassie Ventura. The fact that there is a quote from just this past December, which you emphatically, adamantly, categorically denying there was any truth to what was being said, throws that second chance right out the window. Mm. I don't enjoy saying this. I've met P. Diddy a few times over the years, always cool with me. That apology was bullshit. It was embarrassing. I don't know who told him, who thought for a second that it would work. 50 Cent was on his Instagram page. Just go look at it. Saying the same thing. Who advised him to do this? This is bad. This ain't going to work because it comes across as inauthentic because there's literally proof via a quote from you denying everything. Mm. Everything. Crazy. And accusing your accusers of looking for a payday. There's so many questions that emanate from this. You settled the case in a day that made you look guilty enough as it is. One day, one day after the allegations came out, they must have told you about the video. We still got questions about where the hell was the video all of these years, who had it, who ultimately released it. There's also reports about be it somebody being paid fifty fifty thousand dollars for P Diddy to get a hold of the tape. Well, damn, that's all. You would think you'd have gave up fifty million to make sure that tape never got out. 
And when we look at Ryan Clark, I'm not going to call P. Diddy a bitch or any other name like that. But I ain't going to stop anybody else from doing it. That's real. I'm not going to malign them. You don't hit women when you're a man. You certainly don't kick them like you're kicking a damn field goal. Mm. You don't grab a vase and throw it at their head. You don't drag them down public hallways. That was 2016. Mm. There's been a bevy of allegations thrown against P. Diddy. In this complaint, ladies and gentlemen, there's a complaint filed. United States District Court, Southern District of New York. Plaintiff Cassie Ventura, civil case 23-CV-10098. Plaintiff Cassie Venturi, Ver Ventura versus Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, Epic Records, Combs Enterprises, LLC, Damn. and Doe Corps. Among other violent and unlawful acts in the complaint, Against Sean P. Diddy Combs, raped Mrs. Ventura, Miss Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him. Mm. Often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Miss Ventura, wow. resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding. Blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Miss Ventura. Blew it up. Forced Miss Ventura to engage in sex acts with male sex workers while masturbating and filming the encounters. Ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby. Demanded that Miss Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. And introduced Miss Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. Mm. I am not speculating. I am reading from the report. You were fucked up in 2016. Mm. There's been people that's been talking about P. Diddy's behavior since that time. That's crazy, the stuff that's in there. As of one minute ago, 50 Cent said he has made his last post about Diddy. I said that I would keep you guys updated on 50, keeping us updated, so here we go. First of all, to the person in my comments who said that they would like 50 to ask Diddy 21 questions on behalf of all of us, I agree. Now, let's get into this case. There's a new suit filed by a model who is claiming SA against Diddy. Hi, I'm Christian McKay from Savannah, Georgia. I want MTV and IMG's model mission for 1998. 50 Cent is saying this is too much and I can't post about it anymore. He says, dang, another one. This is my last puffy post. I think he might off himself. I don't want no parts of that. Mm. Honestly, I think that we're all aware this is the tip of the iceberg. That footage we saw the other day of yeah. him and Cassie, tip of the iceberg. Everything that happened yeah. behind closed doors, but probably on camera, knowing this guy. I think we're going to see a lot more of these suits, and the worst is yet to come. They just wondering who or when they're going to let this stuff be known. Mm. If it's on videotape, they got to be shook, man, after finding out he was recording everything. But not only celebrities, not only celebrities, I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians mm. in there, he had mm. princes in there. Mm. He also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> wow. I just had a question. I'm just trying to tell all these young cats out there, trying to come up, you know, like, where do you think they got to go to? From your point of view, you know what I'm saying, what is the best advice you could give them? Because I'll be telling them, like, my best advice is they got to do it their whole new way, a different way, like, like, like they from another planet. But coming from you, coming from the man of, of, of men right now, tell them something, tell them something good. Man. First of all, you want to stay away from these diddy bop motherfuckers. You motherfuckers dancing all on the motherfucking stage and shit. They want your ass. You call them astronauts. So be afraid. Very afraid. You really ain't built for the game. Or something. Something. 
Something no, like that. No, we trying to be famous. Like, you gonna run into a motherfucker like that. Dang. It looked like he was talking directly about him. Hey, I had, just, I had smoked something that Puff had gave me. And it was like, it, it was as if I, I had partied like three nights straight. It was like, <laughs> it was the craziest. I, I was just like, I'm about to go to the airport. You know, I need something that will knock me out. I mean, it, it totally did the opposite. It was, I was, I, I did, cra I was doing crazy dance moves to the weirdest music for 20 minutes straight. Like out, like while he was on the phone and I was just outside the window looking in while he was looking at me like, man, I just wanted someone to go to the airport, you know, just to, to last me so I can knock out on this flight. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have my guy. So he goes down, comes back up with his stuff, and the guy shows Puff. And I was like, no, 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 what? No, no, I'm, I'm trying to give him like the. He said the Snoop Doggy Dog is what he said he's trying to give me. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I want, yeah, yeah. What is that? What's up with yeah, that? Where's that? At? Sounds good. Whatever right. the hell that yeah, is. Like what is that? So <laughs> long story short, he he finally finds it, and he's like, oh here you go. He's like, now the, now my guy said take four like four hits and like stop. All right. You know, like, mm. and we didn't. You know, I just kept going. So, yeah, and so like he was like he was like come back up in five minutes. And I mean, when I tell you, I came back over five minutes and like had a had a result for him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if it was, and then he's on the phone running his empire. Yeah, and yeah. you're dancing naked outside, <laughs> outside of his, his window. window like, <laughs> dancing naked outside his window. Got him for what did he say about Diddy? Uh, he accused Diddy of putting pills in drinks and sexually assaulting people. They're also accusing him of sex trafficking. They oh, got a wow. list of stuff. They're accusing him of. So. so what did he accuse Diddy of? Putting pills in women's drinks. Oh, wow. Sexually oh, wow. assaulting them. And what did he say Diddy's name was? Sean Combs. Oh, so he said that. And then, oh, oh that's crazy. So he said that. Wow. I didn't know that. I never heard that before. He said Diddy did what? <laughs> Put pills in drinks, sexually assaulted women, sex trafficking. I mean, the kind of list goes on. I mean, nah. Uh, those are lies. I think they're all lies. <laughs> Come on, bro. Those are lies. You lying to me, bro. You giving me. You just trying. Because you know I, I love Diddy. You trying to ask me questions. But you, you know those are lies, bro. Why would you ask me something like that? You know that that's not the truth, bro. Come on, bro. You know that's not the truth, man. I'm not going to even do that with you. Okay, okay, well, you seem to be one of the only people defending Diddy. <laughs> A lot of people who were his friends have not spoke up for him. 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 Kim. How do you feel him? about that? Him. That's my friend. You feel like more people should be speaking up that's defending Diddy? That's my friend, Diddy. bro. That's my friend, bro. That's my brother. <laughs> It's my friend, bro. That's my buddy. <laughs> it's my dog. It's my homie. <laughs> it's my friend. I'm confused. Puff, you serious? I'm confused. Diddy uh, invited me over for dinner a couple months ago. Oh, shit, yeah, I saw that. He he told me, he gave me a piece of advice. He said, I've been documenting everything in my life since 1992 or whatever it was. Mm. He's like, I have, I have footage of everything. And he's like, make sure that you bring a camera everywhere. It's important to document your life and to be able to look back on these moments and maybe be able to one day share these moments with other people and they can draw inspiration from it or whatever it may be. Why well, they had them pictures at the bottom, though? Her nails were always painted white, which got people talking because y'all know what Cassie had to say about the white nails and the freak offs. Which is why people suspect the Lord was yet another victim of Diddy's FOs. Now, every time Lori stepped out with Diddy, sharp eyed fans couldn't help but notice that her nails were painted with white nail polish. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, in Cassie's lawsuit, she dropped the bomb that Diddy had a particular liking for the white nail polish. It wasn't just some quirky fashion preference, no. According According to Cassie, Diddy made her wear white nails because he loved the stark contrast against the dark skin of the male escorts he forced her to cozy up with. And it wasn't just Cassie who fell to the white nail saga. Oh, that nigga said wear white nail polish. It's dark and demonic energy that this industry was built on. And people manipulate 
young women, they manipulate kids, and at the end of the day, it's all for the dollar and all to feed their ego. So I've seen some shit where you're like, that's just not right. Like that's just, that person shouldn't be talking to that person. That person shouldn't be in the room with that person alone. When you're in this position to change people's lives, to and you hold the keys to what they consider success, you see a different aspect of the person. People will do anything to achieve their goals. And then people will manipulate and misuse that energy mm -hmm. to get what they want. Everything that Nick Cannon said in this interview explains exactly how Hollywood is. He explained how people manipulate people when they're coming up and rising into fame. And we've seen this with people such as Harvey Weinstein and others. He also explains his own experiences where he's seen things that he just doesn't believe is right. And what's even more disheartening, he talks about how the industry manipulates kids. Mm. So drop in the comments and let me know what you guys think of everything Nick Cannon said in this interview. This stuff is crazy. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What powerful. do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. Mm. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. Mm. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. That was a legendary interview right there. I did into a, a house mm -hmm. and the house is gonna be broken down into certain rooms. Mm -hmm. And these rooms are designated by activities. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do the activities, you don't get in the room, right? I'm so like me, I, I smoke weed, you know, I don't do cocaine. So I'm never going to be allowed into the cocaine room. <laughs> I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? So there's some of these houses and parties I've been invited to. You get there and you realize, this ain't for me. Yeah. Right. I wanted to see, could I get invited and get in that hole? <laughs> and then you get in that hole and realize, man, he's, I don't do this shit. Yeah. I don't fuck around like this. You over the wrong room, though. You be like, oh, damn, bro. That's how you move? My bad. <laughs> Whenever God is mentioned at the Grammys or God is mentioned at the, the Oscars or football games, basketball games, or when, when, when you get a hundred million dollar con contract, I want to just thank God because without God and my mom and my family, I mean, it's kind of it. They don't talk about God no other time publicly other than a big moment happening. And yet, people are worshiping the devil publicly all year long. The whole music video had devil worship in it. Wow. Y'all see this Wow. Y'all see what's going on. So at the end of the day, man, I just had to really realize like, wow, man, Denzel Washington does not do an interview on a red carpet, on a sit down interview. He does not do any interviews without at some point transitioning and then talking about the goodness of God. If you win, right? Come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God. All year though. Y'all check Something this else. video out and make sure you watch closely and listen closely. Babylon is falling, mark my words. Y'all know I did nothing wrong. Y'all know my husband did nothing wrong. But none of y'all in real time, in real time, was strong enough to go publicly and say, we can't throw our sister under the bus. All of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. Mm. We black out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. Let me, listen to the money wow. game. 
This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this the money, the money game. game. But I, we in the money game. And we you cannot sacrifice game. yourself. The uh, best thing you can do for poor people is not be brother. one of them. You cannot We're help them. We're in the money game. Wrong. But let me tell you what the game is before the money game. Like before the money game, it's called the integrity game. Mm. And we've lost the integrity worrying about the money. Mm. And wait a minute. If wait I a minute. crumble, if you my crumble. children crumble, my grandchildren crumble, I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me crumble so I can make a statement. And that's exactly why I said Babylon is falling. Ooh. And if you pay close enough attention to that video, you will see that there are two sides to this. It's crystal clear that Steve Harvey is long gone. If you Ooh. paid attention to what they said, he exposed himself. Just that one video clip will tell you everything you need to know about Babylon and Hollywood and all this extra shit. And if you got to go back and rewatch that video and see how serious Monique was, you can tell by her eyes in the beginning and the way she was looking at that nigga, she right. was serious. Right. And it's so funny to me that Steve Harvey knew exactly what she was talking about. But since they was on his show, he didn't want to seem like a fool. And then he tried to make it about race. And then the people started clapping. Go back and rewatch the video and hopefully you will actually see what you are. These celebrities that are now mainstream and was mainstream will be long gone. They will not be celebrities in the new world. The new celebrities will be people that are adding significant value onto the collective. And this is taking place now for the new earth. So there will be a lot of puppets or celebrities being exposed throughout these couple of years. Babylon is falling. Rewatch that video if you got to. But besides that, I just came out with some new fire crystal jewelry. Oh, These gold true. rhodium Cuban links with some crystal pendants on them. These are new. And when you check on the website, these will be sets. And it'll come with two necklaces, not just one. And on the back, there are clamps too. And I still got these in two on the website as well. Oh, he got the These trip. necklaces right here are going for 50. So definitely go check the website out. You might see something on there that you really like. And tomorrow I will be adding the angel number chain necklaces as well. And I cannot wait. It'll be different numbers like 111, 222, 33, and so on in the middle right here as the pendant. So yeah, definitely go check the website out. You might see something on there that you really, really like. I appreciate y'all for watching the whole video and I love y'all. Respect. How many people do you know personally who have died suddenly and mysteriously in the past five years? I have personally known eight actors, all of whom wow. what? all of whom I have worked with and was close to. Heath Ledger, Chris Penn, David Carradine among them. I believe these actors were whacked. Wow. And I believe that many others, such as Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, and Mel Gibson, are being played to get at their money. In the meantime, many a celebrity's image and marketability is being co-opted co -opted and destroyed. I have earned approximately $40 million throughout my career. I have profit participation in some of my films. I am being embezzled from by this monstrous ring of accountants, estate planners, and lawyers who are mercilessly slandering me and trying to kill my career and I believe murder me in order to gain control of my royalties. I will never forget that interview with- Hold on, was that Harvey Weinstein, my nigga? Randy Quaid, say the truth. I thought that was damn Harvey Weinstein. That nigga looked just like him. I believe murder me in order to gain control of my royalties. I will never forget that interview with Randy Quaid. He was so upset, so emotional, and I really think everything that he was talking about was true. So many people dismissed him as crazy and that he was just not right, but I see a very emotional man that is honestly telling the truth. And what did he have to lose? Randy Quaid, he played as Cousin Eddie on the National Lapoon's Christmas Vacation number two. And he's played on a lot of different movies such as Independence Day mm -hmm. and this movie Real Time.
So what do you guys think of this interview by Randy Quaid and him talking about all the actors that had passed away mysteriously and touching on Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, and Mel Gibson being played out their money? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Dang. He look mad different now. When I used to live in Hollywood and I was actively involved in the industry, there was actually an opportunity where they had tried to initiate me into the occult that goes on in Hollywood. It was a couple years ago and I was in downtown Los Angeles with a friend of mine because he was helping me make a connection with somebody in the music industry. So as I'm in downtown Los Angeles, we go into a warehouse that he had actually turned into a studio. I come to find out after spending some time in the studio that he is later telling me that he throws satanic orgy parties in this studio and he had invited me to come attend. He then shows what? me a video reel of what they do after hours in that studio and Damn. then he shows me a video of them doing satanic rituals with women locked in cages dressed in bunny ears in this warehouse. This is what? then when the initiation request started and he had asked me to come join and be a part of this. You see the Illuminati is real, secret societies are real, and most importantly Satanism is real in Hollywood. Jesus said in Mark 8 36, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? You see so many people with riches and fame thinking that they're living the glory life but you don't understand that everything on the screen is a facade. Deep down inside, they're filled with demons and filled with darkness. And if you are a Christian walking in the will of God, you are way better off than any of these Illuminati puppets are. That's a fact. I know it's people doing poorly in this country. Yeah. And they shot Trayvon Martin dead for looking kind of like I look. Yeah. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X ended up dead for True. telling the truth. So as a comedian, I don't think it won't happen to me. I think they've thrown me in jail 36 times in 36 months, and I think I, you've never seen me in a court of law. That means they're effing with me. And today, they crossed the line, because now they took my babies. Mm. All right, man. Well, yep. Cab, we wish you luck, man. And luck is unnecessary. Thank you. Have a good night. 36 times at 36. The red rooms are like, they're notorious. But like, I'm surprised that people who, they they say they're like really into Hollywood and entertainment, that this is news to them. I'm like, I thought this was all everybody right. knew about this Well, stuff. it's in plain sight. Yeah. I mean, they put all the symbols in the trailers. It's predictive programming. This is, it's obvious. It's right there. I, I mean, the kingdom of Lucifer, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, yeah. Did I'm you? going, I'm going, so I just got offered uh, a movie role. What'd you do? Well, that's the thing. They go, <laughs> do you want to do it? And I'm like, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and then they go, all right, well, do you have to come to LA? So they're like, you know, the whole. The whole what? The whole what, Nick? That's when I really saw how dark and so it's just it was dark it, it's i get creeped out i get scared to death it was soulless yeah never seen anything it and i still every time i get out there i feel like oh man i just i don't feel life out there yeah i don't feel it at all you know what i know i've always said when i get off the plane there i feel like i'm in the office it always like um I just feel like I'm in an office constantly. It always, every light feels like a fluorescent light. It feels like it never ends. Um, but it's hard to find a, it is, it's hard to find a comfort out there. But there's always this dangle. Did you know that singer Billie Eilish exposed one of Hollywood's deep dark secrets during a live Q&A with her fans? You get hit on by old people. Um, the only people I get hit on are a lot, dude. Everyone's a pedophile. Mm. Pedophile, pedophile, pedophile. It's really bad. Like, everybody's a pedophile. Hollywood appears to have a long history of this kind of behavior. Actress Shirley Temple claimed MGM producer exposed himself to her when she was 12 years old. Shirley Temple Hell. was a child star who achieved international stardom with the release of Bright Eyes in 1934. What about Hollywood producer Victor Salva, who's a convicted child predator and is still allowed to work within the industry? What? Salva was convicted in 1988 of the sexual molestation of Nathan Forrest, a 12-year-old actor and star of his film Clown House. Mm. Salva even ended up putting a joke about child molestation in his movie Jeepers Creepers 3. What? How many of you remember 80s actor Corey Feldman saying the biggest problem in Hollywood is affiliate? Hollywood director and CEO James Gunn had a pedophilia themed party. 
and even made posts like this on Twitter. For the record, I'm against ape and baby eating in real life unless you're really, really, really hungry. I what? like it when little boys touch me in my silly place. Shh. Yes, this man is a CEO for one of the most powerful studios in Hollywood. And the Whoa. vice president of Disney was convicted of sexually abusing a seven-year-old girl. Disney music executive was charged with child sexual abuse. What about former child star Bug Hall, who played Alf Alpha in Steven Spielberg's Little Rascals? Uh, two men from that set began sexually abusing me. These predators have some sort of sixth sense for vulnerable kids. What about writer Stephen King, who wrote the novel that the horror movie It was based on, putting a child orgy into the book that didn't make it into the movies? What about the satanic 90s rock star Marilyn what? Manson, who said he wanted to come up with a hookup dating app for children? See, I was trying to come up with a new Tinder for kids called uh, Kinder. It's like for sex and kids. Bring what? light to the darkness. Oh my god. God, this stuff is out of control crazy. Whoa. You do sell your soul. You are allowed to live forever. Mm. And these people that are called youngins, rookies, new booties, like I was, had no idea that these people mm. still live. Mm. They will pray, haunt, kidnap, anything to stay on top. This is their world. They have nothing but time is what they believe. Mm. Now, who are we talking about? We're talking about everyone that's supposed to be dead. Like it's it's a. There is in a the world, industry in the industry. OK, you know, when you when you know, when you walk around with the with the with the fake face and sh you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna open up. It's like, it's like this is not, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that since World War I, mm -hmm. we've been taught by the Indians and all this other shit how to, you know, take skin people and wear their faces to infiltrate the families and this, this, that, and the other. This is something that has been going on since World War I and before that. So now we've conquered the art of exchanging spirits, trading spirits. So it's supposed to be hard to identify, but when it comes down to it, this this world of Hollywood, this wicked world is what they call it. Some people call it Holly weird. You know, um, you, can, you can literally go to Hollywood and you if you open your eyes, it will manifest to you. They'll be right there in front of you. The people who are trading the people who are the people who are on the walls, the people who are idolized are laying in their vomit on Hollywood Boulevard. And it's, it, you have to open your eyes. It's done right in front of us. See, and if you're willing to sell your soul, you know, then you'll be right there, too. Is this the Illuminati? Well, it's not my family. It's not my family. Well, I can't blame that on me and my family, but okay. I can't blame it on others. I could blame it on those that that caused the harm on themselves by coming to the Illuminati and trying to sacrifice themselves in order to get ahead. Can't blame those people. I mean, there's a lot of talk about it, you know, on YouTube. You know, we call it the wormhole of YouTube. But to hear you as a child star come out and say that this exists, mm -hmm. you know, these people are doing whatever they got to do to stay alive and to mm -hmm. ensure that their throne is kept. Is kept. Oh, that's not none of my business. I, I, I warn how I warn when, you know, you, you. That boy been through some shit. Hollywood is darker than you think. Do we think the devil lives there? I think the devil lives within a lot of people that live in Los Angeles specifically. Do you live in Hollywood? I do, and I want to get the F out of there ASAP. Okay, look, yeah. now we understand. The devil won't let me. Yeah. <laughs> the devil won't set me free. <laughs> Literally, uh, I'm trapped. This is the mark of the 
Don't forget to like and follow and stay weird. For a Grammy, get out of here. This celebrity tells an insane Hollywood story. You were talking about the Illuminati trying to stick you for your Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Was that like that was really true? Like, oh, so like I can tell you what happened. So I went to um, Bella Thorne was having a little party, right? It wasn't my idea to go there. I was invited by some friends and it was a Halloween party. I don't even celebrate Halloween, but like just um, even the Bible says good company corrupts good character. But this is when I was like not too. I just didn't know certain things I know now. Let mm -hmm. me just say it like that. And um, so I was just hanging around some people and, and there was going to the party and it was so many signs. Like one of the signs was you, you can't, you got to be half to go another sign you couldn't bring your phone you had to sign an nda and i was like oh, i'm bringing my phone anyway like, i was gonna sneak it in oh, i, I, I was signing one. my name then i was like oh yeah um you gotta prick your <laughs> to get in <laughs> i was like oh, no i'm straight everybody else they went and i was waiting on my uber and while i was waiting on my uber this girl passed out while, while she was about to go in the party after, after they suck her wow by the way this video is scripted and for entertainment purposes only wow stay weird passed out she warned many women of all ages about this she said watch out for the wolves in hollywood honey and i said well i've been in british films for three years i can handle wolves and she said well not the power buses honey and she said if they don't get what they want they'll drop your contract they've done it to lots of girls it did affect your career because you did you did miss out on roles and, and cleopatra was one of those i was a little shocked hearing about marilyn because apparently Marilyn had been so abused uh, by men and had done so many things um, to get roles that she hadn't wanted to do. And most of these men, Holly, were fat and old and ugly and hideous. And this was the only man Marilyn dated that worked for the studios and was powerful who was Walter. All right, so that was creepy TikToks, man. Talking about the hidden truths, talking about the Diddy stuff, talking about a lot of stuff, man. That stuff about some of the stuff that they're talking about creating apps and this stuff is ridiculously crazy. It's crazy. It's mind blowing crazy. Um. If you made it to the end of this one, man, you a real one for real. This stuff is out of control crazy. Y'all let me know in the comments, man, what y'all think, man. Your comments, this is just nuts, though. But you already know, man. I got a TikTok playlist you can go through and watch it, but this was crazy. Till next time, man, self-love and positivity. Do your own research. Fire Squad, I got you and you know it.